Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. In Anime Studio, you have the ability to change default preferences of different features in the program. This relates to both debut and pro versions of the software. To access your preferences, simply go to Edit, Preferences. A new window will appear with a variety of different options, and here I can quickly go through and just name off what each of these do. Auto Assist with Bone Locking Keyframes adds an extra keyframe when bones are locked or unlocked to prevent them from drifting. So this can help you when you are setting up your bones. Scale Compensation for New Layers basically deals with the lines of your layers. Let's say, for instance, if you deselect this and you take the zoom tool, or the camera zoom, I should say, and you zoom into your scene, the lines of your characters and objects that are not using scale compensation will remain the same width no matter how you zoom in or out. If this is checked, the more you zoom in, the thicker the lines will get. Show paths for new layers. This will show the path of a layer movement. Typically, if you have a layer selected, you'll see this path, but if you select this, all new layers from here on out will show their paths. Auto name bones in shapes, or I should say auto name new shapes. This essentially auto names, as I said, both bones and shapes. By default, bones and shapes will be labeled by numbers. So one, two, three, and so on. Zoom with drag box allows you to select an area with your zoom tool and then zoom into that specific area. By default, the zoom tool will be controlled by the movement of your mouse. Consolidate timeline channels. By default, in debut, this is checked on. In pro, it's checked off. Essentially, your timeline is made up of different channels. So let's say you resize a layer and then you move a layer and then you rotate a layer. All of those channels will be displayed in your timeline if this is deselected. If selected, all keyframes will be referred to as one keyframe on the timeline. While this can make looking at the timeline easier, it can make editing keyframes more difficult because you're not sure which channel you'll be editing exactly in the consolidated timeline view. Status bar at top of window just displays the status of the window. Use old library. You can check this if you prefer to use the library format from Anime Studio 6 or older. Inline layer naming allows you to name a layer right when you create it, so right in the layers panel. Highlight frame 0 will highlight the canvas in red when you are on frame 0. This can be a good reminder to let you know that you are in frame 0, or in other words, the work area for Anime Studio. Enable drawing tools only on frame 0 is the default setting for Anime Studio. If you deselect this, you will be able to draw outside of frame zero. It's only recommended for advanced users to use this setting, as this can make things more complicated when working on your projects. Use SMPTE timecode. This will act as a timecode in, let's say, a video editor. So if you're familiar with that type of setting, you can check that. Show angles in degrees and timeline has to deal with the motion graph if you are using Pro, but essentially if you rotate a layer, you'll be able to see the degrees of how this layer was rotated. Disable custom tool cursors will basically show the default cursor no matter which tool you have selected. Disabling audio feedback will disable the clicks you hear, like for instance when you weld two points together. Legacy Curves for New Layers uses an old style of curves. This type of style was used in Anime Studio version 7 or lower. Nearest Neighbor Sampling for New Image Layers. When this is checked, Anime Studio will try to smooth out an image if you blow it up past its original size. If you deselect this, the image will look blocky. Auto Save for Crash Recovery. Anime Studio will automatically save a temporary backup of your project file every 30 seconds. So in the event of a crash, you will be able to recover a very recent save of your file. But it's always best to save often, just in case. 
Auto center new layers will automatically center all layers that you create. So if you want your layers centered on the canvas when you create them, you want this checked. And finally, you have the two options below, startup file and language. Typically, you're probably going to want to switch this to an empty document or a last save document once you get used to Anime Studio. You may not always want to start with the default file when the program starts up. And of course, you can choose your language of choice. So now going to web uploads, you have the ability to enter your information in here for YouTube. So you can automatically upload your files to YouTube once you're done creating them. And finally, you can adjust the editor colors. So you can adjust your background, what's inactive, the object, the default fill, and so on, as well as your GUI colors. So in other words, what your windows look like, your text, and all that stuff. And you'll need to restart Anime Studio to see any of these changes. So once you've done all that, you can click OK, and then you can use your new changes. And that wraps up this lesson on the Preferences window. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I have more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so check them out, and I'll see you next time.